So, normally when I do these how to fix a movie franchise dealies, I generally don't get into imagining a storyline because my angle is usually about structural production and decision making. But in the case of Terminator, there really is nothing left to recommend at this point other than what kind of story you'd tell. So okay, fine. If for some reason the people at Skydance asked me to think up a Terminator sequel, this is what I'd give them. Okay, here's the thing with the Terminator franchise. The Terminator was a perfect movie. A kick-ass action stalker chase movie that crafted a cool, imaginative mythology to justify the unstoppability of the villain. It was fine the way it was, and it didn't need a sequel, but then they made one, and they made kind of the perfect sequel. It built on the original in logical ways, it delivered new and bigger thrills, it subverted genre expectations, and most vitally of all, wasn't afraid to give the story a logical, definitive ending. There was no ambiguity there. Judgment Day was averted at the end of Terminator 2, the end. That's why all the sequels have rung false, folks. They keep trying to either repeat the time travel, stop Judgment Day storyline unnecessarily, or give us the feature-length Future War movie it turns out was never going to be as cool as we imagined it would be. And it always feels cheap and unnecessary because we've already seen everything come to a perfectly satisfying conclusion. So if I was in charge of getting Terminator going again, that would be my condition number one. Nothing after T2 happened. Rise of the Machines? didn't happen. Salvation didn't happen. Sarah Connor Chronicles, yeah, I know it has fans, but your DVD sets aren't going anywhere. It didn't happen. Genesis, sure as fuck didn't happen. Cyberdyne got blown to shit in 1991. The T-1000 was defeated. The T-800 melted down. The Connors rode off into the sunset. Skynet never goes online. Judgment Day doesn't happen. The future war is prevented. Which means if you're gonna continue this franchise now, you'd have to take it in an actual new direction without leaning on the same old shit. So no Skynet, no Future War, no Schwarzenegger Terminator. I would make it a clean sweep and say no Connors as well, but I guess it wouldn't be the worst thing if Linda Hamilton showed up to put a shotgun to somebody, so call that a maybe. But Bob, I hear you asking, what do we make a Terminator movie out of when you've taken away all the pieces? Well, I don't really think I have. See, the first two Terminator movies are both primarily cat and mouse chase thrillers built around an assassin, a target, and a bodyguard, wherein the cyborg, Skynet, Future War stuff really only exists to provide an excuse for one or more of the players to be a literal unstoppable killing machine. So to me, this hypothetical ideal new Terminator sequel mainly just needs to continue that narrative tradition spinning off from the end of T2, but built on new foundational materials. And also with at least one robot and some time travel, so it still technically counts as a Terminator movie. So what would I suggest? Well, since the series has previously insisted on telling the same basic story as the original, I think it might be fun to, yes, do that once again, but kind of reverse everything. What would that mean? Well, for starters, T2 stopped Judgment Day and the Future War, but it didn't stop the future, right? And since nobody outside of the Connors and the Dyson family have any idea what actually happened at Cyberdyne and then that steel factory, we can assume that 1991 in the Terminator universe was followed by the same basic stuff that followed 1991 here in the real world, just with slightly more robust robotics industry because according to T2, we were only about a decade or two away from all this business. So maybe we open up in a future world, say 2050 or some such, where we got all that great robotics and artificial intelligence stuff happening, but since there was never a Skynet problem, it all kind of worked out this time. An automated, fully mechanized future where roboticism of labor, war fighting, and all the other heavy lifting has allowed human civilization to evolve to the point where, at look, to save time, it's a functioning post-labor utopian technocracy future, aka the exact opposite of the original timeline's technology will kill us all dark future. Get it? Okay. Oh, and they also have time travel since according to Terminator, that was also right around the corner too. So, if the future is good, where's the conflict? Well, consider Consider this, a mechanized post-labor future would mean an economy and social order where individual power and human capital is centered almost entirely on intellectual or creative prowess, not physical strength, since metal has replaced muscle in almost every vocation outside of athletics and entertainment. And since we're not necessarily that far into the future, you'd likely still have a solid contingent of brute strength and not much else dudes stewing around resentful of the fact that guys like them used to be able to ascend to prominence, but now everything is run by the smarties and their robots. And now you see where this is going. 
going, right? It's one of these pissed off human characters who goes back through the time machine from his future to our present, and his mission is to kill the person responsible for creating the advances in robotics and AI that brought about the future he hates. So the future is good, the time-traveling assassin is human, and the evil scheme is all about preventing a huge leap forward in robotics technology. So you see, we're shaking it up. Oh, and maybe give the guy, like, jacked up future steroids or genetic tampering or whatever so he can be superhuman in this incredible Terminator-esque threat. Now, as for who this robotics genius target is, aka the actual plot of the main film, well, my pitch, a now-grown-up Blythe Dyson, Miles Dyson's daughter. Yes, this character exists. She was cut from T2, but she still got mentioned, and her scene was back in the special edition, so she's canon and she counts. Why not just use Daniel Dyson? One, because they did that in Genesis and no one wants to be reminded of Genesis, and and two, because I happen to think it'd be cool to have a black actress headline a Terminator movie. Plus, in case you hadn't heard, movies about black women scientists are making big fucking money these days. In any case, the time-traveling super assassin comes after her, she's more or less familiar with this kind of scenario since she's one of the handful of people who actually know what happened in Terminator 2, so to protect both herself and her work, she arms and activates a prototype humanoid robot she'd been working on to serve as a makeshift bodyguard. Basically, a heroic, primitive version of a classic Terminator. Strong enough to make the action stuff interesting, but no nowhere near as invincible, so there's still suspense versus the human and eventually super well-armed bad guy. So we got a heroine, a bodyguard, and a bad guy. What happens next? Well, it's a fucking Terminator movie, so what do you think happens next? They chase each other around, they get into fight scenes and action sequences of increasing scale and spectacle. Maybe do something with boats this time, or a blimp, that'd be fun. Maybe along the way the bad guy could get involved with like-minded, psycho-survivalist, techno-paranoid militia types, and tell them about how disenfranchised people like them will be in the future, and they get obsessed with stopping the girl in her work too, thus setting up a dynamic for future sequels. Hey, that sounds interesting. Whatever happens, it probably ends up in a life-or-death final showdown in some kind of factory. And if you absolutely feel the need to have Linda Hamilton show up and lend a hand, yeah, fine, people would probably get a kick out of that. Oh, and you notice how nothing I'm suggesting here would cost all that much? Yeah, let's stick with that. Don't think T2 money. This franchise has to earn its way back to that. Think more Deadpool or John Wick. Mid-level budget, so it's okay for it to be R-rated like a Terminator movie should be, aimed at hardcore action fans for potentially massive returns. And that would be how I'd fix the Terminator movies. A new setup replacing technophobia with a more science-positive angle, a villain driven by ideology instead of programming, a new distinctly 21st century heroine, and a new robot hero that can pave the way for further expansions of what the Terminators themselves can be going forward. Now, do I think this would save the brand? Shit, I don't know, but at least it might restore some credibility for at least one more sequel and chart a new course for further new takes on the mythology going forward. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? By all means, let me know. Please remember to like, subscribe, share with all your friends. Next week, we'll be doing something different.